prompting something good in version 6 is really easy, but prompting something great can be incredibly hard. What? In my last video, I let Midjourney version 6 and Dolly 3 go head to head in a prompt coherence challenge. And even though Dolly 3 managed to take home the title of the prompt coherence king, there's actually more to this story. Because let's face it, even with the best prompt coherence in the world, if my images aren't aesthetic enough, then I really haven't gained anything, have I? In version 6, Midjourney's prompt coherence has improved dramatically. However, depending on how specific your idea is, things may actually seem harder than before. So how exactly do you unlock its full power? Well, today I'm going to show you how to replicate very specific photos in Midjourney version 6. Alright, so in my first example, we're going to start off with something a little bit easier. Well, I basically just went on the internet and I started searching for a whole bunch of images that we could replicate. And I stumbled upon this one. It's kind of like a studio photo for like a product shoot or something like that. And don't worry about the fact that it's from Adobe Stock because we're not going to feed this into Midjourney. We're just going to use it as a reference image for what we're going to prompt within Midjourney. Now, I know that I said that this is a bit of an easier example, but bear in mind that prompting this in minute detail still isn't necessarily something that everyone knows how to do especially if they're still new to Midjourney. Anyway, so let's kick things off. And uh, remember, prompting isn't an exact science, and it's always the process of like trial and error. And our primary objective here is to start off with a bare skeleton prompt and then inch our way towards the final outcome. All right, so I'm going to start off with our bare minimum prompt, which is imagine photo of a young man lounging on an orange bean bag. And then I add a whole bunch of parameters that I'm going to use throughout this example. Okay, cool. Let's have a quick look. And as we can see, we got an image of a guy who's lounging on a beanbag, just as we would have expected. But I think it's also pretty obvious that this is not anything like the original reference that we're trying to replicate. And this was kind of expected because I didn't add a whole bunch of details. So let's do that. We're going to add some extra details, starting off by adding the following sentence to the end of the prompt. The image is against a light teal background. We're going to keep all the rest the same. And let's have a look at what we get with this. All right, great. So this is already much closer to what our reference image looks like. We've got the guy who's sitting on the bean bag. The bean bag is orange, and we've got the teal background. This is pretty close, actually. But obviously, there's still a whole bunch of other details that are still missing. Okay, so now we're going to add additional details regarding the composition as well as our subject. And we're going to do it like this. First of all, we're going to say that we want the man to be positioned on the right side of the image. Then we're also going to say that we want him to wear an orange hoodie as well as blue jeans. And I'm also going to add this little tiny detail here at the end saying minimalist light teal background. I'm not entirely sure how much this will change, but it's just a little tiny addition that I want to put in there. And let's check out what this gives us. All right, excellent. So in these images, we can now see that our subject is positioned a lot clearer to the right of the image. We also see his entire body because we've now defined what the jeans should look like. The hoodie is orange. Everything is actually exactly the way we want it to be. Now, the only difference is that he's not quite in the same pose that we're looking for from our reference image, as well as we're missing like the soccer ball and the smartphone. And we're going to add those details like this, starting off with more or less the same prompt, but we're going to add in the fact that we want him to be holding a soccer ball in one hand, and we want him to also be holding a smartphone in the other hand. All right, so let's have a look. All right, so what you can see here is that we're slowly inching our way closer and closer to our reference image. Let me just quickly open up the reference image so that you can see what it looked like. And you'll notice that there's a couple of things that are still different. So what the reference image shows is that, yes, he's holding a soccer ball. He's also holding a smartphone, but the smartphone is actually orange. In our images, let me just quickly show you, the phone is not orange. And some of them are holding the ball. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed with Midjourney version 6 is that it clearly has a bit of an issue with hands, which we can see in the top right corner. That's It's really unfortunate that this seems to be something that has gotten worse from version 5 to version 6. But anyway, that's not the point here. And the other thing that we'll notice is that in these images, the sneakers aren't the right color. Let's check out quickly the reference image again. He has cropped jeans and he also has white sneakers. All right, so we can add those details though. So let's make some additional changes to our prompt. And as you can see, what I've done here now is I've defined that I want to see cropped pants or sorry, cropped jeans, and that we also want white sneakers. We've also said that we want the smartphone to be orange. So let's have a look whether this works. Okay, so sure enough, we now have our male. He's sitting on an orange beanbag. He's also wearing an orange hoodie. There's a whole bunch of orange in this image. And he also is holding his orange smartphone. Some of these images uh, do show cropped pants, but um, it's not quite getting through everywhere. 
In some cases, he has socks on. In others, he doesn't. Maybe that will change in the other images. We'll see. But clearly, he now is wearing white sneakers as well. So we're getting pretty close to our reference image. Let me just quickly open it up one more time so you can see. But what you'll notice is that there's one big difference. So I'm seeing the fact that, first of all, our reference image shows a Caucasian male. And the background is also a lot lighter. Mm, I think that's something we'll change later on. But let's start focusing on the male first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the following changes. I'm going to stipulate, first of all, that I want this to be a studio photo. Now, I don't know whether this is going to change anything again. This is more of an experimentation. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to stipulate that he should be a Caucasian male. And finally, there's one thing that I want to add now, and that's something more related to the overall atmosphere and the vibe of the image. Now, some people argue that this doesn't actually do all that much, but I actually tend to disagree. It's Whenever it comes through, it's really subtle. But I do think that adding these sort of things gives your images like a nice polish at the very end. So let's try this out. Awesome. So I think we're getting really close to our reference image now, with the exception of the hands. I gotta say, the hands are I'm just horrible. They're horrible. But one thing I want to do here is now I want to make sure that, first of all, the haircut is right. These haircuts actually look pretty good. They're very close to uh, our reference image. But let's make sure that they always come up like this. Because if I were to reroll this problem multiple times, I would probably see different haircuts as well. And the other thing I still want to try to get closer to the reference is the background. Because the background is a bit too much teal. Um, and maybe cyan is the right color. We'll see. I'm, I'm, this may not work, but I'm going to give it a try. So here's the prompt. And what I'm going to say is basically I'm going to define the hairstyle that I want to see on our subject. And I'm also going to switch out the teal for cyan. And we'll see whether this works. All right, so even though not everything is perfect in this image, like for example, the ball isn't always in his hand and the position has changed a little bit, these are like the typical variations that you'll see between different rerolls of a prompt. I think this turned out pretty good. We didn't quite hit the exact color that I wanted. I think the top left probably gets closest to what I was going for. But um, but anyway, I mean, like these are things that will randomly change from one prompt to the other. You can reroll this until you get something that really suits your needs. And I think overall, it's pretty clear that we were able to hit almost all of the aspects that we were really looking for. Even the haircuts are pretty close to the original. Let me just open up real quick the reference so that you can see. And you'll see that this is obviously a slightly different stance, but you know, you're not going to get it that specific. And I think you basically get the idea of what's possible. So I think what you can see pretty clearly here is that using an iterative approach with a natural but very specific language will essentially allow you to produce surprisingly specific results. And this is actually an entirely different style of prompting that simply wasn't possible in version 5 to this extent. And although you might think that this makes things so much easier, um, that's only half the truth. Yes, in this case, the prompt coherence is very, very good. But the more specific your idea is, the more specific you're going to need to be in your prompts. And that's something that not everyone is necessarily used to or even capable of. It requires a ton of imagination and also uh, like a really, really good vocabulary. That's why I'm currently working on an entirely new submodule within my course, Masters of Midjourney. Version 6 requires an entirely new prompting framework, which I'm teaching all my students over the next couple of weeks. If you're curious to find out more, check out the links in the video description. Anyway, I realized that this was an easier example, so let's give something more challenging a try now. All right, for this next example, which is slightly more complex, we're going to work with the following image of a woman sitting on her balcony. I have no idea where she is, but judging from the architecture, my gut tells me that this might be somewhere in Eastern Europe. I'm just going to assume that this is Prague, and our focus is more on the actual subject, you know, the girl wearing her sweater, her jeans, sitting on a balcony and just enjoying like a moment in the sun. So let's start off with a very, very simple prompt. And here it is. Imagine a photo of a young woman enjoying the sun on a plant-filled balcony in Prague. Let's check this out. All right, so these are already pretty good. They're really, really natural. These are, they could have been taken by, I don't know, her boyfriend or something like that, but they're not exactly like our reference image, which had a lot more focus on the actual woman. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify that we want her to be the central focus. And we're also going to say a little bit about her clothing as well as where she's seated. Excellent. So these are already much, much better. You can clearly see that the woman is much more in the focus of the camera. We've zoomed in. She's wearing the right clothes. The sweater is exactly what we were looking for, at least what I was looking for. But there's still a couple things that don't quite fit. So she doesn't necessarily look like the lady in the reference image. And the overall style of the image isn't quite what I want. And I'm also missing sort of 
her socks, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of changes here. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to add in the white socks and also specify her hairstyle. Now, as I said, the overall style of the image isn't quite what I need. So that's why I'm going to add in this piece about rendered in a candid lifestyle photography style. And another thing that we're going to change is we're going to change her ethnicity because since I said we're in Prague, let's switch it to something like a Czech woman. Now, obviously not all Czech women look the same, but we'll just leave it up to Midjourney to come up with something that fits in this case. So let's check these out. Okay, so we're slowly getting there. Let me quickly open up our reference image just so you can see what we're working with. Here you can see her hairstyle, her clothes, how she's seated, and her surroundings. So I think this is almost, we're almost there, but we still have a few more steps to go. So first of all, what we're going to do here now is we're going to make a couple changes and enter this prompt here real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a few more details regarding her surroundings, right? So the balcony, as well as the facades in the background. Like, where is she? Like, what's the architecture of the background? So once we've added these, let's have a look at what these images give us. Okay, nice. So whereas in the previous image, we didn't see all too much about the architecture in the background. It wasn't entirely obvious where she might be. And you might argue that here you still can't see a whole bunch more, but the fact that we stipulated that she's in Prague and that the architecture should, should look this way has forced the majority to basically incorporate that into the image. And we've also said a little bit more about the balcony itself. So we've defined that the plants are like quite leafy, which means that we don't have as much of the really small vegetation that we saw in the earlier images, but instead we've got some bigger plants too, which is great. Now, the only thing that I'm really not happy with here is her position. She's still not positioned as in the reference image. And uh, let me quickly show you what the reference image looked like. See how she was basically resting her legs on the railing of the balcony. And you could see her socks, her legs were pointing up. That's something that I would like to try to get right in this image. Now, it's not easy because Midjourney still does basically whatever it wants to do. But let's give this a try with its last final change. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in her body is angled comfortably towards the sun. Her legs are stretched out into the air, her feet resting on the railing of the balcony. I hope this will give Midri enough guidance to create something that's closer to our reference. And finally, we're also going to add in that final sentence regarding the atmosphere and the vibe. So in this case, I'm using the atmosphere is serene, capturing the essence of a quiet personal retreat. The scene is a snapshot of urban living. Okay, so let's hope for the best. All right, so this one's almost spot on. Um, there are a whole bunch of imperfections here that are a bit annoying with version six. So you can see that there's an issue with the feet in the top left one, and also the feet in the bottom left seem slightly deformed. Unfortunately, her socks have also kind of disappeared, but I think we could tweak that with a couple of re-rolls as well. But the basic gist of it is there, and we've, what, I, what I really think is important is that we managed to get her to stretch out her legs in a similar pose as in the reference image. The one thing that I did find a bit odd is that Midjourney marked this prompt as ephemeral. I suspect it's because I was describing what she was doing with her legs. But I mean, come on, guys, chill. Anyway, so at this point, the one extra thing that you can do is you can adjust the stylization level. I didn't do this in the previous example, but since this is a pretty complex prompt, changing the stylization can have a pretty strong impact. So here are some examples of what the exact same prompt produces at a stylized level of 50. Next, stylize of 100, stylize 150, stylize 200, and finally, stylize 500. So some of these get better with higher stylization, whereas others actually don't. Generally speaking, the higher the stylization, the more subject-centric the images tend to become. Overall, I think it's pretty obvious that Midjourney still has some work to do with regard to hands and feet, because my goodness, some of this stuff is like really horrible and worse than in version five. I'm not really sure why they seem to have gotten worse in version six, but I'm sure they'll manage to iron things out eventually as they progress. I mean, keep in mind, we're still at the alpha level for version six. So this concludes the second and slightly more challenging example of how to use extreme detail in Midjourney version six in order to get exactly what you want. Because sometimes you don't just want a pretty image. Very often you'll want something extremely specific. And in order to achieve that in V6, you're gonna have to get a lot more detailed. So how do you feel about Midjourney version six? What do you really like? And what are you maybe still struggling with? Let me know in the comments and remember to check the video description for my mid-journey course as well as a whole bunch of other free stuff. Thanks for watching and remember to keep on learning. Cheers and take care.